Kelbrook in the final WBC check weighing to monitor the weight making struggle of both Golovkin and Brook. He weighed in at the Winker Bank at 167 pounds and 8 ounces. This article has wrote it wrong. They've wrote it as 167.8 pounds. No, 167 pounds and 8 ounces. So do this right. I'm doing your work for you. I want my check. Um, Golovkin at Big Bear High Altitude with um, old Abe the Idiot Sanchez. <laughs> he weighed in at 162 and nine ounces 162 pounds and nine ounces so he only has two pounds and nine ounces to go i'm not gonna read too much into that yeah because weight making is a painful process and obviously you've got to get your nutrition your diet your training all the checks and balances and you've got to time it as perfectly as you can that that all plays a big part but maybe some of us are looking to deep into this the whole point is is that brooke has seven days to get rid of seven pounds and eight ounces and it's going to be a struggle for brooke but even if golovkin was to make 160 today what does that tell us it tells us that he still has to maintain staying at 160 for seven days you think that's easy no it's not easy just because you got there early it doesn't mean that you won this battle no, it doesn't necessarily. He still has to maintain that for seven days. You have to entertain the other possible scenario that a boxer can overtrain and get there too early. There's some boxers, and, and I like to have examples to hand, but there are some boxers who have complained that, ah, oh, I came in too late. You know, they came in two or four pounds beneath the stipulated weight. It's happened before. It's definitely happened. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying this is Golovkin because Golovkin is going to knock Brook out anyway, in my opinion. But, you know, it's just something to think about. Something to think about. The advantage in the weight making process goes to Triple G. Kelbrook's moving up two divisions. Triple G has been a middleweight since an amateur. He knows the process. But let's not just assume that this is going to dramatically have an adverse negative effect on Kelbrook. Should be a decent card. I'm not sure if um, HBO are going to showcase Golovkin and Roman Gonzalez all on one card. Where they'd go from the O2 Arena after Golovkin takes care of business. Well, we assume he sh should do. And then they'll go over to California to watch Roman take on Carlos Cuadras, who I'm informed is a hard puncher and can box pretty well. He can use his feet very well. I've got to do a little research on him. Admittedly, I have to. This will be Gonzalez's fourth weight class that he's conquered if he beats Cuadras. So, you know, that's really good. He, too, is at Big Bear. He's at Big Bear with Golovkin, training away, high altitude. And he's saying, I will prepare myself to be in the best condition of my boxing career to defend his belt. He's very dedicated, you have to say that. Very dedicated young man. You have to be impressed. Lee Haskins, he takes on Stuart Hall in a rematch. Haskins will be defending his IBF World Bantamweight strap. Charlie Edwards, he'll be taking on John Real Casimiro for the IBF Flyweight Championship. Casimiro is a lot more experienced. He's champion. He is a two-weight champion. And I'm informed by Nauta that Charlie Edwards will have his hands full in trying to get this belt. Karen Smith, WBC silver super middleweight champion. He takes on Hungarian Norbert Nemesapati. He's supposed to be tough. I believe Paul Smith might be on the bill. Martin J. Ward takes on Andy Townend for the vacant super featherweight title. Martin J. Ward is a bit of a stylist. Should be interesting. He's coming back after getting shot a couple of years back. Gavin McDonald, Jamie's brother. I think he's on the card. He's the WBC silver super bantamweight champion. What's all with his silver belts, Eddie? You know. Brooks stable mate. Kid Galahad continues his comeback on the bill. Connor Ben, Nigel Ben's son. He's on the bill too. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. So that and the Gonzalez card makes for an interesting next week's boxing. One thing I like about Liam Smith, you know, 
is he doesn't make things complicated for himself. And I'm I'm not saying that um that that's a great thing necessarily because you can become predictable in the ring itself. But you know, his boxing is pretty simple. If you force him on the back foot to counter, he'll try that. If he sees he can back you up with body shots and attacks, he'll do that too. He's not particularly fast, keeps his hands up high, has quite a stiff jab. And, you know, it's just um, fundamentals, just basic fundamental boxing. Is it good enough to beat Canelo Alvarez? I think, I, I believe he's going to do better than what a lot of people think. I'm not sure if he's going to do it. I don't think he's going to pull it off. I don't think he's going to pull it off, but I think he's going to do better. And I, I like um, what he's saying. He says when he beats Canelo, he's going to give Canelo an opportunity to fight again because he knows it's big money. <laughs> he didn't say that there, but that's why it's going to be. I mean, wherever he's getting paid now, if he beats Canelo and then fights him again, he's in the money. He's in the money. On November the 26th, Anthony Joshua will be fighting on the Manchester Arena. I don't know. It, it, this is really strange. They're kind of give, giving off his next fight in pieces. It's like a puzzle. First of all, they gave us the fight date alone, November the 26th, no um, venue. Now we've got the venue. Now we're just waiting for the opponent. Uh, how about just <laughs> putting it all together in one package, Eddie? I don't know. So he's at the Manchester Arena where he won't be forced to take on the toughest guy. I don't think they're going to make this pay-per-view. And it will give him a chance to branch out outside London and let them see him. Well... I suppose Chris Eubank Jr. will be gutted next week, Saturday, when he watches Brooke against Triple G. I believe he wanted to fight Triple G. And I believe he wanted to get some publicity too. For those saying that he ducked, I'm not, I mean, I, I understand why you're saying that. You say, oh, it's absolutely ridiculous. You know, I, I see what you're saying. But in terms of what happened in negotiation, it's been one-sided. Whatever's been leaked out to the public has been one-sided with Eddie doing all the talking. And Golovkin's people and Golovkin himself doing all the talking. I haven't heard English say anything. Eddie Hearn says that Eubank Jr. is being mismanaged by Eubank Sr. English. Well, he would say that. He would, he would say that, you know. But Eubank takes on Tommy Langford in the not-so-distant future, defending his British title against Tommy Langford in Wales. He'll be making about 150 grand as opposed to... The two to four million he would have got taken on Golovkin. So yeah, 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 yeah. Financially, you know, he's took a hit there. Physically, I know he might be saving himself. I don't see Langford beating Eubank. I don't see that happening, but you never know. Liam Liam Williams takes on Ahmet Patterson on the same bill. And apparently that's going to be the headlining fight, not Eubank Jr. Not because Liam Williams is a bigger name, but because it's in Wales. So the Welsh crowd, a lot of the Welsh crowd will be coming to see the hometown fighter. But I'm sure Eubank is going to bring a lot of traffic there too. And um, it's similar to Dillian White and Dave Allen. That was on the undercard of Josh Warrington versus whoever he was facing in Doncaster. Josh Warrington had the headlining fight being the local lad. But everybody was talking about Dillian White and Dave Allen. So, you know. Liam Williams is headlining for all intents and purposes, but from my standpoint, if I miss Liam Williams versus Ahmed Patterson, I'm not going to lose no sleep, but I will be watching Eubank Jr. if I have my way. I definitely will be watching that, so it's a strange one. I didn't even see Josh Warrington's fight on the Dumbcaster, but I didn't even see it. I saw his last fight when he took on the guy who Rigondeaux stopped, I think in Japan. The tall Jap Japanese guy. I saw that one. But no, I didn't even see the fight. But I saw Dillian White, Dave Allen. So, <laughs> who's really headlining? Who's really headlining? Because the truth is, more people are going to watch these events on television. A lot of people didn't give a shit about whoever Warrington was fighting. Or Warrington himself. They wanted to see Dave Allen and Dillian White. So, I understand why they're doing it. They have to cater to the venue where people show up. And have to physically get to the venue. You know, They're not going to be too appreciative of some out of town or is headlining the card but for all intents and purposes on television Eubank is a headlining act Dave Allen and Dillian White was the headlining fight on the other card 
What the hell am I talking about, man? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Let's move on. Let's move on. So, we're hearing about a battle of Brixton. Dillian White versus Ian Lewison. Two British heavyweights to reside in Brixton. <laughs> yeah, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Dillian White, he, he wants to fight. October the 7th, he wants the showdown. Dillian has 18 victories and one loss. 14 KOs. Lewinson, 12 victories. Two points defeats and one draw. He won some form of title in China, I believe, the other month. Ian can punch. He can punch pretty well. He's been calling out David Price ever since Price started telling us that he knocked out AJ. He says, well, if you want a world title fight, at least take somebody on. And he wants to fight David Price. But um, if he's saying Price needs to gain harder, I, I'd, I'd say um, Dillian's been more active. This would be a better fight if you're talking about fighting someone who's been more active and putting more work. Probably Dillian has put more work in recently than David Price. I think Ian needs to get into a lot better condition than the last time. I didn't see the fight in China. I did see him on a York Hall bill the other month. And he won He won by stoppage, but he clearly needed to be in better shape. So, huh? something for Brixton to look forward to anyway. <laughs> what, O2 Arena? Yeah, it have to be O2, I guess. it have to be O2. To house two big South Londons, you know what I mean, from, from Bricky. I like it, I like it, I like it. David Price is said to be contemplating the Joseph Parker fight on the Anthony Joshua bill and d d don't do it man <laughs> don't don't do it pricey man. pricey don't do it man <laughs> pricey don't, don't don't go down that road man you know what I mean don't do it don't do it don't do it you going to get knocked out you're going to get knocked out that you is just too rough for you he's too too rough if there's any scenarios where either of you have to get for a sticky patch, he'll more than likely get through his and you won't. <laughs> so, if I was pricey, I wouldn't take the fight. I wouldn't fight Joseph Parker. I think Parker bangs too hard. He boxes too well. I think um, he's too active. He has the momentum. I think he's more battle ready at this stage of both men's development and careers. He'll have too much energy for David Price. I think, you know, if if Price can land um, a big right cross, then yeah, maybe, maybe. But uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I like to see it, though. I like to see it. I like to see it. 